We wanted a world that was unsettled, really pointing at the fact that this war has just ended. And in fact, a lot of the play has debate as to whether the war is over or not. And spoiler alert, it's really not. Uh, and that there's a kind of um, unsettledness under everything that starts to permeate. And there's also a kind of compression because that enemy is coming closer and closer to the gate. So we're sitting on the edge of chaos. And we want each of the disciplines to be able to serve that in a different way. So starting with our set design by the brilliant Courtney O'Neill, uh, we first started taking a look at seats of power. And what's interesting is that over time, uh, it's hard to tell what the time period is sometimes when you're looking at these buildings and especially when you look at the impacts of, of war. Uh, so that felt like a great starting place as something pretty epic. And then pulling it into the present, wanting to be here and now, imagining what is Thebes in relation to Cleveland, we started looking at Cleveland City Hall in specific. So this facade that you see is based on Cleveland City Hall and pretty much to the T except for this. We decided no sconces because not needed. Um, and then we really wanted this feeling of compression and pressure. And so that whole wall starts to tilt forward. You'll see that there almost imperceptibly, but that pressure that starts to happen on Creon. And then you'll see her there on those steps. That is what we took as a real seat of power. She delivers the edict from there. And that moves down into a courtyard of dirt and the bollards that separate the kind of royal family from the chorus. And as the play goes on and we move into one society, um, different chorus members and people of a lower status start to move into that center world as well.